Number 46. Assuming ideal solution behavior, what is the freezing point of a solution of 9.04 grams of I2 and 75.5 grams of benzene? We need to outline the steps necessary to answer the following problem, and then we must answer the problem. Okay. So, freezing points of solutions. Keep in mind that with solutions, there's always two components. There's your solutes and your solvents. We need to figure out out of these two, the I2 and the benzene, which one is your solute and which one is your solvent. Well, just know that the solute is always the smaller amount that is being dunked into the solvent. The solvent is generally your liquid component, uh, and it's generally going to be more amount. So in this case, by the wording, they said that we had a 9.04 gram of I2 that was in the 75 grams of the benzene. The solute always goes in the solvent. So I2 has to be the solute, and the benzene has to be the solvent. Okay, wonderful. That's going to help us a lot uh, down the road. Now, freezing points. We need to find the freezing point of a solution. Now, a freezing point, we can just classify this as like, you know, TF. A freezing point is just one temperature in which your liquid, your liquid solvent will freeze into its solid. So just know that these freezing points are highly reliant on the solvent. So that's why I went in the back of the book to find out what the pure freezing point of the benzene is. And just know that benzene is C6H6. So they might say benzene, they might say C6H6. Um, it's tomato, tomato, right? The pure freezing point of C6H6 is 5.5 degrees Celsius. In a pure substance of just benzene, at 5.5 5 degrees Celsius, liquid benzene will convert into solid benzene. But now we don't have pure benzene. We have a solution. We added something in it. So the temperature is going to change a little bit. It's not going to change by a lot, but a change is still a change. And just know that when you're talking about freezing points, your freezing temperature, whatever it is, in this case 5.5, if you're adding solutes into it, it will always depress. It's called a freezing point depression. And depression just means that you're going down. So I guess DD, depression, down. That means that your freezing temperature of a solution is always going to be lower than the normal, the pure substance. So maybe on a multiple choice, right? And they give you the pure freezing point of benzene, 5.5, and they give you A, B, C, and D, you know, different numbers. If there are any choices that is higher than this number, that's automatically incorrect. The freezing point can only go lower. So we're looking at answers that are going to be roughly a little bit lower than 5.5. So if they throw on like 6.5, get rid of the answer. 7.5, get rid of it. You know that those aren't going to be the answer choices. But now we just have to actually find the freezing point. What is the formula for freezing points of solutions? Well, that's this formula right here. Delta TF equals KF times me. Am I? Delta TF, we see that little triangle there, that means change. This is the change in the freezing temperature or the freezing point, whatever you want to call it. But it's not the actual freezing point, but if we know the change between the pure and our solution, we could find out the solution freezing point. Now a KF is the freezing point depression constant. This is reliant on your solvent. So I had to go into the back of the textbook to find out what that KF value was for benzene, C6H6. And it is 5.12 degrees Celsius per molality. So we know this number already. But now, this little italics M means molality. Well, they didn't give me that, so we're going to have to find that out. And the I stands for a Vant 
half factor. Anytime that I don't know, my I just the accents come out. <laughs> Van Toff factor. Okay, cool. Uh, which also they didn't tell us, so we need to find that out as well. So let's um, let's outline our steps. So I guess I'll start a up here. Step one. We're trying to find that change in the temp. We know the KF. The first problem I run into is the molality. So step one is to just find the molality. By using the molality formula, which is down here. So I'll just bring this up. And maybe we'll work alongside this. So maybe this will be like the start of B, I guess. I'll get rid of this. We'll bring this down here just so that we have extra room. And now let's find the molality. Molality equals the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. That's why we had to identify who was who. The solute, they gave me grams, but I need moles. So I just need to convert the 9.04 grams of I2 into moles of I2 grams to moles of the same substance, we know how to do that. All we have to do is just divide by the molar mass, mm. So I have to go on the periodic table and find out what the molar mass is of I2. There are two iodines, and each iodine weighs 126.9. So two times 126.9, I get a molar mass of 253.8. So I'm just gonna divide by 253.8. So 9.04 divided by the 253.8, and I get 0 0.03562. That's good enough. When I, when I do the molality math, I will take the whole number, uh, but we'll use that one just to you know write it down on the, on the screen. 0 0.03562. Okay, now the next thing I need is my kilograms of solvent. Well, they gave me 75.5 grams of the benzene, but I need kilograms. But that's back to basics, right? Grams to kilograms, using your SI unit conversions, we could always just divide by 1,000. Similarly, take the decimal, move it to the left, three spots. 0 0.0755. And that's the number that goes in the denominator. And now since we have the two components, we can find out the molality, which is um, abbreviated by just having that scripted M. So molality equals the 0 0.03562 divided by the 0 0.0755, sure. Let's do molality equals, so this number divided by 0 0.0755. And that looks good to me. Okay, so we get a molality of 0 0.47, Okay, so now we know the M value. We know the KF, that was looked in the back of the book. We know the M, now we just need to find the I value. So that's step two. I guess we'll say identify. Identify the I. I, I, I absolutely love it when it rhymes. Wow, identify the I, I love it when it rhymes. Okay. I'll stick to this job. <laughs> Identify the I value. Okay. So the I value is kind of like a concept, nothing to really calculate. The I value just basically tells you how many ions of your solute will uh, your solute dissolve into 
when it's placed into the solvent. Now there's two types of solutes that you can have. You could have ionic compounds, which is a metal and a nonmetal, or covalent. I see that I have I2. This is purely a covalent compound. Now, just know that for your covalent compounds, your I value is always going to be a 1. That 1 basically means that you have one whole I2 that is in the benzene. This is not going to break down into two I's, right? I and I. You only have to break it down when you have ionic uh, compounds. But since this is a co covalent, we're going to assume that the I2 is just being held together and the I value is 1. So that checks out. So now we're ready to, step 3, find the delta TB. Just kidding. Not boiling. We're not in boiling. We're in freezing. <laughs> so let's do it. Delta TB. No, it's F. Christina, it's F. <laughs> The change in the freezing point equals the KF, which is 5.12 for benzene, times the molality, which is 0 0.4718, times by the Van Hoff factor, which is just 1 in this case. So you don't have to even include it if you don't want to. Um, but, you know, just to show that it's there. So the change in the freezing temperature will be 5.12 times this total number, and we get a roughly a low number, which is totally fine, right? If you're getting changes in your temperatures of like, you know, 50, 100, 200, go back. Something happened. And this delta T value uh, should always be a positive number as well. So if you get negative values, something happened. So I'm going to cut it off at 2.4. And this is degrees Celsius because one of my KF units is Celsius. Now this is the change. Keep in mind that this is not the actual freezing temperature. We have to do something with this value to the pure freezing point. Now the pure freezing point for the benzene, because it's always of the solvent, was 5.5 degrees Celsius. Now we have a choice. We can either add the pure to the delta F, and or we can subtract it. Now you tell me, going by what we just said, right, the freezing temperature will always be depressed or lowered. Will we add the two numbers together to get my new freezing point, or will we subtract? Tick tock, tick tock. You are absolutely correct. You subtract them because my freezing point of the solution has to be lower than the original. That's subtraction. So 5.5 minus 2.4. And 5.5 minus 2.4. We get 3.1. And that is your freezing temperature. Okay. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Um, leave a comment if it did help you out. Leave a comment if it may might didn't. Any any type of uh, you know constructive criticism or just you know any inputs in general, we welcome anything. Um, thank you so much for you know coming here, getting chem help uh, from this channel. We got tons of videos so that you guys can learn at your own pace um, and and get the concepts down and master the concepts. Um, you know, so that you could do great on your tests and quizzes. We got physics and math videos on the channel as well. So if you're in those, you know, uh, classes or your friends or your classmates, let them know. Um, hopefully we can help them out too. Thank you. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.